You always order enough food, it looks like someone's gonna die today. And she goes, oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> I gave her a hug and then she just like completely started bawling. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> this video was supposed to be a completely different video. I feel like I say that all the time, but truly this video was not supposed to be what it is. It was gonna be a who dresses me better versus my fiance and Dan Dan. They were gonna go into my closet, pick out cute clothes. I was gonna even see which ones would match my Raycons the best. Are you getting what I'm throwing down? And then I just, I can't do it, you know? I'm just feeling the feels. And you know when I feel those feels, I like to put in my Raycon earbuds and I like to just listen to sad music because you just gotta let it out sometimes. You just gotta cry it out. Maybe you listen to a podcast about self-improvement or dealing with grief and loss. Maybe you watch movies and you just cry the whole time or you rewatch a vlog from two years ago when you were in South Korea and you bawl your eyes out. But Raycon has made it possible to do that in peace be it, okay? Because I don't wanna make my mom cry. I don't wanna make my fiance cry. So I put in my Raycon earbuds. They're such a comfortable fit. Every pair of Raycons comes with these customized gel tips from extra small to extra large. So you will find the perfect fit for your ear. And when it fits perfect, it's a completely different listening experience. I mean, it doesn't fall out. It doesn't bother you. And it just feels like that perfect noise isolating fit. It's got an improved rubber oil look, which I think looks so sleek. There's no stems, no dangling wires. and the earbuds sound amazing. It's got eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life, which is amazing for traveling, working, going on walks, literally anything you can think of. And the best part of all of this is that Raycon started half the price as other premium audio brands, which is honestly a steal. And don't take it from me, get yourself a pair, maybe even a spare, because they have a 45 day happiness guarantee. And trust me, you'll be really happy with them. And it's got a built in mic, so you can pick up a call with the press of a button. So make sure to go to buyraycon.com slash missmangobutt for up to 20% off your order. Brought to you by Raycon. That's buyraycon.com slash missmangobutt for up to 20% off your order. Your ears, your ear holes, they will thank you. So I don't know if you guys were here for maybe like two years ago. We went to South Korea and we did this whole vlog where I was like bawling my eyes out. I don't even know what came over me. Honestly, I thought that these were very comical stories that I was gonna be sharing in the vlog like two years ago. And it was mainly about my grandma, my mom's mom, because I had gone to visit her in Korea. I had even gone to visit me and Dan Dan's grandma. So he's on my dad's side, Dan Dan. So we share a grandma there. And I had visited both grandmas in Korea and both of them were the most dramatic experiences of my entire life. Wait, Dan Dan, I need to tell you this, okay? Right. So I went to go see Harmony, right? <laughs> Our Harmony that we share. And I hadn't seen her in years because she's been living in Korea. And so finally we meet up, and even my fiance, met her I think that was like your second time meeting her we met up at this cafe we were we were just crying bawling our eyes out and it was so beautiful and then afterwards we dropped her off at home but she lived on top of this hill this yeah, big I remember, hill I remember yes. that place. And, and she said she was gonna walk up by herself uh -huh. and we we're like no we can walk you up there like we can literally even drive you up there and she was like no 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 I need to walk so I can get better you know exercise because I'm getting old I need exercise so we're like okay so she starts walking up and we stayed at the bottom to make sure she got up the hill okay uh -huh. but every two seconds she would get to the side of the road the side there's like a brick wall here <laughs> she would hold on to it and look back at us and then she would start crying and then she would crawl a little more up the hill. Then she would hold on to the side of the wall and look back at us <laughs> and start crying. <laughs> my sister was there too. And in that moment, we're all at the bottom of the hill. And my dad's so dramatic because my dad gets emotional too. So he won't even like look at her. He's like walking away. And me and my sister are bawling our eyes out like, what the going on. Then we drove all the way to the middle of nowhere, I tell you. So we were staying in Seoul in Korea and then we drove to the middle of nowhere where my other grandma, my mom's mom, was staying at like a care facility because she has Alzheimer's. She has Alzheimer's and she's in this care facility and we had taken her out to like eat this really good hot pot-ish thing and it was really cute. There were cherry blossoms in the area and I was so sad because she didn't remember me. And I remember crying about it in Korea because I was like, she didn't remember me at all. 
and then I, like there were parts where I felt like she felt bad for not remembering me So she tried to pretend like she remembered me, but I oh knew she didn't God. remember me So my dad was living in Korea at the time and he would pick her up go all the way to the care facilities Because he was living in the city too. He would go all the way into the middle of nowhere in the care facility He would drive like two hours at a time just one way He would pick her up from the care facility and she forgot that this was her son-in-law so she would think that he was a taxi driver. Right. And so she used to get into the back and then she would give her address to her house in America. Because that's all she remembers. I'm so depressed. And then at first my dad said that he would try to like be like, oh, <laughs> remember your daughter? I'm her husband, <laughs> you know? But she would just kind of like nod and then five minutes later she would forget. So from then on he would just go and say, oh, the driver's here to pick you up. And then he would pretend to be like a taxi driver and he would get out of the driver's seat and like open the door for her. She would even try to tip him sometimes. Tip? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Because she That's really so thought though. he was a taxi driver. Wait, how does it work though? Like, Dementia? Like, do you forget every... Yeah, so every apparently time? you don't forget like your habits. So we noticed this because when we went out to dinner with her, um, or lunch with her, she still, after eating every meal, she would put on her yeah. lipstick. She would never forget like these small habits, mm -hmm. but you start forgetting like big chunks of your life. So she forgot me. She never forgets my mom out of all people. Wow. Like, the, and she always talks so highly of my mom. She, I remember growing up, anytime I used to do anything, even if I made fun of my mom's name, because her <laughs> name sounds very similar to egg in Korean. <laughs> so then I used to to be like, oh my god, hi when you why would you name mommy that? Like, and then mommy would be like, Well, oh my, why did you name me such a weird name? And she was she would get so passionate, she would smack both of us and be like, Do you know what a beautiful name that is for a beautiful girl like your mom? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sorry. Yes. So if you guys remember that vlog, uh, my grandma was still in Korea at the care facility just because um, there wasn't a lot of places here that could really handle dementia, that also spoke Korean, that we felt safe enough. And there's a lot of like reputable places in Korea that like are in the mountains that you get like a nice view, you know, you get to enjoy your, your nature. And um, a couple months ago, my grandma had gotten sick and she was like in critical condition for a couple of weeks. And it was like so traumatic and stressful, but then she got better. So we were like, okay, okay, like that was like such a close call. Let's figure out how to get my mom there just in case, like, you know, with old age, you just don't know. We gotta figure this out. But the thing with Korea is that you have to go in quarantine for two weeks unless you're vaccinated. So I'm like, okay, easy. My mom's vaccinated, so of course she can go. But they said that now because of like, I guess all the variants, even with the vaccination, you have to have like these crazy exemptions. Like you have to have these crazy reasons of going. Some people, if there's no emergency, you have to have like family members in Korea that vouch for you, that literally apply in Korea, you apply in America, and then like the embassy or the consulate will connect you guys and try to get you an exemption for quarantine, even if you get negative on all your tests. Now, I'm not complaining about this because one of us was trying to go on vacation. That's not why I'm complaining about this, okay? So my mom, she was working on trying to get that. I mean, it was such a struggle. The embassy would not pick up the phone. They would not eat, like respond to their emails, nothing. So my mom's freaking out. And during all of that, my grandma was slowly getting better. So we we're like, okay, okay, we just need to get this in. We need to get this done ASAP. And then the other day, she was like sick again. So she was in critical condition. And I had known this and my mom knew this. Like the whole family knew this. And then one morning I wake up like super late. Like two days ago, I woke up super, super freaking late. And um, I'm washing my face. And I asked Andropa if he's coming over with the baby because my mom had been so sad about my grandma being sick that I thought maybe Sophie would cheer her up. So I was like, you need to come over ASAP because mommy is kind of sad. And he was like, yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. But did you hear? And I was like, about what? And he says, about grandma. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know she's sick. Like, you need to bring the baby. And he said, no, she passed. And I was like in the middle of washing my face. And like, I don't know why, but in that moment, I just like went into like full on, okay, it's okay, we got this. 
I didn't even get emotional, which is so bizarre for me, because normally I'm like, even now talking about it, I'm emotional. But I was like, okay, well, hurry and come over. I called my dad, and I was like, you need to come over ASAP. I texted my sister. I finished washing my face. I, I even like put on my little lotion, and then I came downstairs, and I was like, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna make sure my mom's okay. I'm gonna get her to Korea. I'm gonna do A, B, C, and D. And then the minute that I see my mom's face, I just started breaking oh, no. down. And the worst part is, like, my mom was trying so hard to be strong, too. So my mom was like, oh, did you hear? And then I started bawling, and then I gave her a hug, and then she just, like, completely started bawling. And I think it's really weird, because I think when I was young, and my grandpas, uh, both of my grandpas had passed away, and when they had passed, I felt very like, woe is me. I think I was just really sad for me. And it was just like tears because like, my grandpa is gone and I loved my grandpas. And there is still so much of that with my grandma. But I think like now that I'm older, I just feel so heavy for my mom. Like it's more like pain for my mom. I feel like I can't even be sad because like, I just need to like, make sure she's okay. So now my mom has to go and see my grandma and we're gonna bring her back. We actually, my mom had this great idea. She had seen this somewhere where instead of getting like a burial ground, there's like an eco-friendlier version. My mom's eco-friendly all of a sudden. It's, it's called like a bio urn where you put your loved one's ashes and they plant a tree from it. Damn. And so the whole cemetery is filled with these beautiful trees and so instead of going to like a typical cemetery where you see tombstones, yeah. it's kind of sad. It's just all trees. What? And then like on the tree, you engrave the family name. So my mom's gonna go and we're gonna bring grandma back and we're gonna get her a beautiful tree. Yeah. <laughs> and she's gonna be swaying in the wind and my mom is gonna go visit her. We're all gonna go visit her a lot. Now, oh, my fiance is so mad about this. The minute that I bring it up, he's gonna get so heated. My mom's been working for months to get a quarantine uh, exemption. I, I know some people might think that it's selfish, but my mom, has sometimes a very fragile mental state and the idea of her quarantining in a hotel for two weeks like just isolated by herself i don't think that she can handle it in a way that's not traumatic and also like her mom is yeah literally in critical condition yeah. i don't think she can just sit there for two, two weeks and just thinking you know and then like yeah. she's in the same country she's like literally an hour away and like just quarantining this is the time you get a quarantine exemption not when you go on vacation like this is the prime example of why this type of thing exists they would not give it to her and this was so frustrating because i had seen people on tiktok go to korea and now i don't know the situation so i'm not gonna get mad at them but i had seen some people like going with like um i think like tourist visas and they didn't quarantine so i'm like what the heck is going on like i'm starting to get frustrated i don't know maybe they're korean citizens who knows but i was getting frustrated she's getting frustrated and then right after my grandma passes they still didn't know if she was going to get a quarantine exemption so my mom literally drove all the way to the freaking consulate waited there until someone would talk to her because you can't really talk to anyone without an, an appointment which you can't get because they don't do appointments online you can only call and make an appointment but they wouldn't pick up their phone so my mom went all the way to the consulate and uh she Thankfully met someone so sweet so sweet who was like I got you. This is my personal email I'm gonna make it happen for you. So apparently they work one week shifts So the lady was like I can only do the exemptions for this week So you have to go to Korea this week because next week I can't do anything for you It's gonna be a whole new person so my mom was like, okay, so she got the email, we stayed up all night, my fiance was the one filling out all these crazy forms. Now apparently as a US citizen, you need a visa to get into Korea, it was never like that. So we had to apply for a visa, quarantine exemption, and on top of that, uh, my mom can't go alone to Korea. She hasn't been there in eight years, and even though she speaks Korean fluently, it's so like, especially at her age, she's like in her 60s, it's terrifying. It's like terrifying to go to a country where you're not familiar with things. So she's freaking out. My sister's pregnant, she has work. Andropa has work. And my mom's like, even if you go, what are you gonna do? Like you don't know, you know less than me. We're gonna be two idiots in Korea looking around. We look like kidnapping prime time. So I was like, okay, okay. I said my fiance. She's like, he doesn't even speak Korean. Not even a little bit. I'm like, okay, okay, you're right, that makes sense, that makes sense. I'm like, take daddy. She's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. not this time, okay, he's annoying. <laughs> I'm kidding, he has work, that's why. He has a really busy schedule too. So I was like, okay, is there anyone? And her best friend actually happened to be want to go to Korea. And she had been kind of like gathering miles because Korean trips are expensive. So she was like gathering up her miles and I was like, 
we got it. We're gonna send both of you to Korea. Don't worry about anything. We're gonna get your flights. We're gonna get you a cute little hotel. And you guys can, you know, obviously she has to go to the funeral home and like do all of these things. But afterwards, you can go eat all the good food you want. <laughs> you can go shopping. <laughs> yeah, now thankfully I feel so much better knowing that my mom has someone that she's going to Korea with. Imagine if she had to go alone because the, the place, the care facility is in a rural part. So she has to take a train from the city, then a taxi, and there's no hotels there. There's only like hostels, which I think I would be a little bit nervous about her staying, especially in like a rural part. Not saying that anything's wrong with that, just like a place she's never been. And there's not a lot of people. It's like in the middle of the mountains. In the oh, middle of the mountains, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I was like, mm -mm, my true crime having self can not send my mom alone to the middle of the mountains in a different country, not even in this country. Thank you very much, <laughs> okay? Thankfully, she has a friend who is really well versed. She has family in Korea, the friend. Uh, she's an older woman, okay? She's like my mom's age. But she has family in Korea, so they kind of know the area really well. So they're gonna go together and just hopefully have a good time because like imagine my mom goes all the way to the funeral home and I can't imagine like her being in a clear head of mind to even get back to the hotel by herself. That's what's been going on with us. Anyway. <laughs> well. She's gonna say she's okay, but she's maybe she, you know, yeah. she's just hiding it. So I think my mom's okay in the sense like it's in Korea. So I think my mom's in this like crazy mode where she has so much she has to figure out. So she's like kind of similar to what is happening to us, like the whole family. We're all in this, okay, problem solving mode. We have to make sure the communication is on point with the funeral home, with the um, cremation place, you know, all of these different things because they're in a different time zone than the visas, than the exemptions, than the flight tickets. Like it feels more of like this massive project that we have to tackle. And I am worried that like right when she gets back, I think that's like when it all kind of hit more. She th she's like trying to be so strong too. She's always like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, no, I love you guys, it's all good. But then the minute she's like, you know what? I'm gonna call my friend and see if she wants to get dinner in Korea because her friend lives in Korea. So she called and she'd say, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to Korea next week. I know it's a short notice and she's so happy. And then the friend would ask, oh, like, why are you coming? And then she would try so hard to casually say, you know, my mom passed away, but then she would just break down every time. Um, I think Mingo peed on me. I think Mingo peed on me. How is that possible? Maybe it's her tears. <laughs> I gotta go change and be right back. Oh, it's so wet. What do I do? Okay, I'm back. I changed into the same pair of pants, but black this time. Can I share with you guys? Uh, so I was sitting with my mom just talking about life after we kind of figured out, like we booked her ticket, her friend's ticket, her hotel and her visas, everything's done. Like she's just gotta go now. So we're sitting there just sharing like our little experiences with high money because me and my sister were the last ones to see her because my mom was gonna go, but then COVID hit and then the exemption problems. So we were the last ones and I was telling her what it was like seeing her in Korea, how cute she was. was showing that then your grandma's uh, picture. She was beautiful. Yeah, my grandma Yo, was so I, pretty. If I was born back in the day. <laughs> wow, she's actually really cute. Right, like, she's pretty. She got that cute smile. Even like when she got older, she was so cute too. She was really cute. And wow. she would always brush her hair yeah. the same way. And like right after dinner, even when she was in her what, like late 80s or something. Even two years ago, she would put on her lipstick, put it in her little purse, and she had a <laughs> little purse with her. Yeah, she was really cute. Wait, how, how old was she? 80, late 80s? So we were sharing these cute little stories. This one involved our other harmony, and my mom was like, you'll never guess, the craziest moment I remember with my own mother was after I got married. So at one point, my mom was living with both grandmas. So she was living with my dad's mom and her own mom. Cause this is like when everyone in our family started immigrating to the United States, so they all just kind of like, we're floating around, let's try to settle down our roots, where are we gonna stay, who is gonna stay with who, in terms of the grandparents. And so they're both living with my mom, and they had decided to 
decorate the place. Then we're gonna go to a flower shop, pick out some flowers, right? Create these vases around the house, beautify it. And both grandmas got into such a flower fight at the flower shop in America where my mom couldn't even speak English yet to say sorry to the employees, but they were getting wild. I'm talking bad girls club, smacking each other with flowers. For real? <laughs> yes. For real. At that moment, obviously my mom is so stressed, but in hindsight, she's saying it's so comical because it's not, like they weren't even having a party. I was like, oh, was it for like a big party or something? No. It was just for the house. They were smacking each other with flowers. They were stealing flowers from each other's hands and they came home and they made, they spent hours all day making these bouquets. And then they presented it to the family to pick the best one to display on the dining table. Oh my God. <laughs> she said oh it was just the most comical experience ever because you don't really see that in your own parent, right? And she just remembers like thinking, what? What is happening? But in that moment, she was so stressed. So are you guys going to call your other grandma? <laughs> <laughs> um, My mom's going to go see her in Korea. What about you guys? Uh, I, I talk to her sometimes. When yeah. was the last time? Um, Two months ago. Hey, have you talked to your grandparents? Oh two yeah. Ago. Okay, so so I'm sitting there. I'm crying my eyes out. I look at my fiance and I tell him to call his grandparents. Uh -oh. And I think Tiffany had like walked into the room at that right moment, and she had known about my grandma passing. And all she heard was like, "Did you call your grandpa?" And she starts panicking. She's like, "What happened? Did something happen? <laughs> what, what's what's wrong?" And I was like, "Oh, no, sorry, sorry, nothing's wrong. I just meant like call them." <laughs> but she had like a mini panic attack just walking into the room. And I mean, it's yeah, it's been a wild. Oh, and then let me tell you, you know my dad, right? Oh, I know your dad. Oh yeah, you know my dad. Yeah. My dad is. How would you describe my dad? He, he's a prankster. He's a troll. Yeah, he's a troll. He's a and troll. He acts like tough outside. Yeah, but he's soft. He's a soft. He's a but he's a troll. He's probably one of the biggest trolls in the family. More of a troll than I am. I think I get my trolliness from him. <laughs> so right after we find out all the news, right? My mom, she's been bawling her eyes out. I've been bawling my eyes out. I ordered lunch. Everyone finally gets here. Sophie's here. Andrew is here. We are all gathered, and this is the first meal we're sharing since we found out the news. I had to go to Korean food, so I'm taking it out of the containers, and I had ordered a lot. Okay, this is a problem with me. In Korean, we call it eyes are bigger than the stomach. So you get greedy when you look at menus. You're like, oh yeah, I'm so freaking hungry. I'm going to eat it all. And then you order it all and you're like, oh, I'm so freaking full. So I had ordered a lot, especially because of this occasion. I wanted to make sure every, you know, my mom wanted a little bit of everything. Let her eat whatever her heart desires. And my dad, my dad is looking at the food I ordered, hands on his hips, and he goes, <laughs> you always do this. You always order enough food. It looks like someone's going to die today. Oh and God. he's just in his own little world laughing at that. And so I look at him and I go, Appa, not today. Bro, in front of your mom? Yeah, I said, Appa, 오늘은 그런 joke 좀 하지 마. Which is like, Appa, today don't do those types of jokes. Uh -huh. And he goes, ah, 그러네. Which is like, ah, you're kind of right. <laughs> So we eat lunch and then afterwards I get a text from Patricia and she's like, what you doing? And I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. She was so casual. Our conversation before this was like, what you doing this weekend? What you doing? Ah! And so she said, what you doing? And I said, well, my grandma died. <laughs> and I, okay, I'm laughing now. I'm laughing now. But in that moment, I was like so out of it that I was like, maybe I just need to talk about it with someone. I wasn't even thinking about how she would feel. Obviously, that's a really bad position to put your friend in out of nowhere. Like you should ease them into it. So I texted her that and she was like, oh my God. And then I went on this rant about my dad's joke that he had just done because this was like five minutes after lunch. I'm like, can you believe my dad? What is wrong with this guy? And she goes, oh my God, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I'm really sorry. I think it's a habit. And I was like, it's okay, like I get it. Because it she really does say I'm dead in practically every conversation of every text. So it wasn't like a bad joke, you know, it was just the way that she talks. And I was like, it's okay. It's oh, okay. It's really okay. Like also, uh, if you don't like dark humor, I'm sorry, but that's like the only way I can cope, okay? Because this week has been utterly depressing, I tell you. Depressing. <laughs> and if we can cope with some little giggles because Patricia's deceased, <laughs> you know that we shall. <laughs> Oh my god, we were, we were 
been talking about this and at the time it wasn't so funny but now it's kind of funny so this is before my grandma had gone to Korea so like I said we were looking for homes like care facilities that could take care of my grandma in here in Atlanta and there's just not a lot like she was at a senior home but they don't do full-time care because I mean she has Alzheimer's she can't even be left with the stove because she'll keep it on she might burn the place down she can't even be trusted to like have like an hour to herself because sometimes she'll literally walk out the front door and go on a walk and then forget where she is or forget what she was doing so that's so dangerous so we had her living with my sister and my mom at one point just so that they can I mean and they were both working at the time so they're just trying to take turns making sure she has like 24 7 supervision but like I know some people are gonna dog on us in the comments but truly like unless you're working from home which neither of them were at the time how can you really do that? Because you need money to pay the bills and you need money to support grandma, right? But at the same time, you need to be at home with her 24 seven. So it was an insanely stressful situation. And that, I don't think I mentioned it, but if you guys watched the beginning of when I started YouTube, my sister's dog went missing. And it was because my grandma had opened the door to go on a walk and she had kept the front door open, so both of my sister's dogs, Coco and Bobo, had run out. Uh -huh. And um, Bobo was, he was actually found by a neighbor who lived like down the street. And they kept it. But this neighbor kept it? didn't want to give Bobo back what until my sister, my sister put up a reward once. And then when she upped the reward, that's when they called my sister. So funny. Up. If you found a dog, you, you dog. want to return just, them yeah. Yeah. to the owner. But that person obviously was looking to make extra money. Mm. I can't it's imagine ever crazy. doing that to someone. Like when you find a dog, you're freaking out. You start knocking on neighbor stores. You maybe post on a neighborhood app. You take it to the vet no. to see if the micro trip is belonging to someone. But they kept Bobo in their garage. In the when garage. For yeah. days. For days. And they heard, oh and they lived close enough that my sister and Opa said they had gone by that house a million times screaming for Bobo. Like, Bobo, wow, so Bobo. They, didn't, they purposely didn't Yeah, know. didn't help. And they had put out a reward, mm -hmm. but they, I guess they didn't think it was good enough, so they waited until my sister upped the reward. Damn. So she had let the dogs out, and it was, <laughs> at the time, it was so stressful. And then she was gone too, so they had to search for all three of them. They get Coco back, then they get my grandma. Well, they got Coco back first, but they were obviously looking for my grandma, most importantly. They get my grandma back, and Bobo's gone. And my grandma has no idea that Bobo's gone. And so that's, I think, when we were like, okay, I think maybe it's gonna be hard for us because Korea is literally on the other side of the world, but it's probably safer for her and better for her because we just don't have the resources to watch her 24 seven. And then this morning, my fiance and I are sitting there with my mom, right? And the laundry machine song oh goes God. off. Now, this laundry machine song, we've had the same laundry machine since LA. We brought it all the way across country. <laughs> Love this laundry machine, okay? It makes a really long sound. It's like, how does it go? Come on, show us. <laughs> and it goes on for like two minutes, okay? It's the longest melody of your life, okay? So it starts playing upstairs. And my mom goes, oh, what's that noise? And we're like, what? That's the laundry That's machine. That's like what she listens to literally yeah. every other and day. And she had just put in the laundry. Oh, oh no, no. And so my fiance, also we were on totally different pages. I go, oh, and my fiance goes, oh, that's so scary. And I was like, that is scary. My mom's a clone. Because you lost that many singing. That's a fake mom, she said. Because I thought he was thinking of scary movies. So I was like, oh, my mom's a clone. What She's been replaced by you? a fake mom. What? And my fiance goes, no. We had just seen this movie, like a recap of this movie, a Korean movie where this woman gets Alzheimer's. And my grandma had Alzheimer's before she passed. And it always starts with small things. And no, to me, it's there. like, how do you not recognize something like that? It's, and he was grilling my mom like a doctor. No, he was I was asking notes. her, like, yeah. what, what did you hear? When you hear that music playing... What was your first thought? Like, is the music sounds foreign to you? Did you hear something else? Or the sound doesn't sound familiar to you? Like, what was going on in your mind? She said that it sounds like some sort of melody, but she, she couldn't hear it clearly. So hopefully that she just couldn't hear well. Not that she's blanking yeah. out, not that she's, you know. So now we have a new strategy that she has to go out there and she has to do more brain activities. They say with Alzheimer's, like you have to use your brain as you get older, you have to talk more. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, like that's when your brain just 
stop working and st stop like, forgetting things. I mean, Bro. if Alzheimer's runs in the family, it's not like guaranteed that people are going to get it, but it just has to do with like your lifestyle, your health, if you're active. My mom thankfully has been active for most of her life, like incredibly active. But they She's also say if you're super active and then you all of a sudden stop, yeah. Yeah. that's terrible. Really? Yeah. You have to keep moving. The moment you stop yeah. is when your body just kind of falls apart. So, I'm gonna buy her some golf clubs because uh, my mom's all her friends play golf. Yep. Ping pong, I think, is a little too intense for them right now. What? She loves no, I think she'll love No, golf, she though. goes ping pong once a week to volunteer. So, my mom um, used to do lessons, but now she just volunteers and she she teaches ping pong to elderly people every Wednesday morning. Oh, Isn't no. my mom so cute? She wakes up early every Wednesday morning to go give free lessons to seniors. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's so senior. cute. Yeah. <laughs> but she's a senior. They're actually just like one year older than her. <laughs> she's like these old people. <laughs> Your mom does not look like she's sixty though. Yeah, my mom looks wow. so young. Sometimes I'm shocked. I keep thinking she's like in her fifties, like early fifties still, and I'm like, oh my god, she's in her sixties. I keep wanting to be like, wow, mom, like you're a really young grandma, but she's not. She's actually a really old grandma. <laughs> like actually, like age wise, she's in the older group of grandmas. But wow. And that is what happened this week. We had to watch Sophie multiple times. Okay. You know Sophie loves him. Not I she figure does. It loves. Him. My strategy yes, is technically they're similar to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder goes, what did this guy just say? They sometimes they cry because they want something. Mm -hmm. So if the her mom, Stephanie's mom, is in the room, Sophie will want her mom. Mm -hmm. So she will cry for her. But if she doesn't see it, she don't want it. Then I just gotta distract her with different toys, different things. And then she loved the swings outside. Yeah. Every time I sit outside with her on the swing, she falls asleep. So cute. But she didn't fall asleep with me on the swing. I tried. <laughs> and then he had a nightmare that we had kids. <laughs> This guy, sometimes he has nightmares where we're on Mars and we get stuck there Mars? or something. Yeah, he has so what? many. Oh, yeah. Dude, I don't even know how many Mars nightmares he's had, okay? Uh -huh. So he has these nightmares about Mars and he'll wake up. And depending on how bad the nightmare is, if he tells me before we brush our teeth, I know the nightmare is bad. If he tells me during breakfast, it's like, oh, it's like, he's like, oh yeah, I had a nightmare. But this time he goes, oh my God, babe. I <laughs> Bro. Because I had the scariest dream of my life and I'm like, oh my god. Oh, that's the scariest smell of my life. <laughs> Your morning breath. Go over there on that side of the bed and tell me. And he goes, he literally is talking this way. I'm laying this way. He goes, so in my dream, we were at the hospital and you pooped out a baby. You, you weren't, weren't even pregnant. pregnant. The doctor was delivering a child uh -huh. and apparently the child needs some like skin transfer or some shit. It needs some kind of like extra transfer mm -hmm. and they looked at us like hey can you guys give us a baby and stephanie just pooped a baby out of nowhere <laughs> so this like the doctor can like transfer let's say the skin of our baby to the other baby so right? baby is skinless no just a small patch so you pooped out a baby just for the doctor to use and then i looked at the doctor said, so what do we do with this baby and the doctor's like then you have to keep it and i was like i didn't even sign up for this i was like that must be a mistake <laughs> It must be a dream. We were trying to be nice and now we left with this baby. And I woke up, oh my god, so relieved. Relieved. <laughs> yes, so, so relieved. relieved. That's the best feeling. Wow, so that's what's been going on. How are you guys doing? <laughs> How's your day? How's your week? <laughs> I hope that wasn't the most depressing thing you've ever heard. I'm trying to lighten it up before I let y'all go. You know what else is funny? Uh -huh. This guy over here was like, hey, you know, now that we have a very, very big lawn space, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you, you know where this is going. Why don't you bury your grandma in our backyard? <laughs> Really? With a tree <laughs> so that your mom can see her every single day. That's a smart idea. But then you know what Tiffany said, which makes total sense. She's sitting there listening to this and she's like, oh yeah, 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 like I can help you guys call the state of Georgia. And my fiance goes, why? And we're looking at him like, because you can't just bury people in your backyard. And he goes, wait, why? That doesn't make sense. It's not like I killed her. And I'm like, <laughs> because who knows? How would the police know? How would they know? How would they know? So the grandma, imagine like, sorry, dark humor. Grandma just there every morning like, hello. <laughs> hello. Wait, so what happens if you end up like, I don't know, in you the know, future you move. What's funny is I told my mom this, thinking I'd give her a laugh, cause we're all about dark humor in this house. And she goes, you know, I was thinking about it. <laughs> 
I, I was thinking about that. And she said, but what stopped me was when we move. And I was like, well, I guess we can. And my mom goes, I guess we have to take her with us. Oh. I was like, I mean, that makes sense. Oh. So, so we would just dig the tree oh, back up. Bring that to the plane. Yeah, we'd be like, excuse me, sir. Can you dig up that tree over there? <laughs> yeah, um, this is getting weird, you guys. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That sounds weird to say. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed my pain and my suffering on this one. But I love you guys. <laughs> and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.